Harvard Divinity School. Harvard Lavender Graduation Ceremony, May 24th, 2022. Good afternoon. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to the Harvard University Lavender Graduation Ceremony. I am Katie Caponera, a staff member here at Harvard Divinity School, and I use she, her pronouns. My colleague, Greta Sporing of the University Office for Gender Equity and I are honored to be hosting Guiding Today's Celebration. We are so excited to welcome you today to this momentous and historic occasion to celebrate our LGBTQIA graduating student community. This is the second year we are hosting this graduation ceremony in our first in-person Lavender graduation. Now let's get to the festivities. I'd like to introduce Dr. Melissa Wood Bartholomew, Harvard Divinity School's Associate Dean for Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging. Dr. Bartholomew's passion for racial justice excuse me, racial and social justice, was cultivated at Howard University where she earned her undergraduate law degree and law degrees. She has gone on to achieve a Master of Divinity right here at Harvard Divinity School, as well as her Master of Social Work and PhD of Social Work from Boston College. Dr. Bartholomew is earnestly committing to eradicating racism and oppression and advancing healing and societal transformation through spiritually engaged, heart-centered, multi-faith and multidisciplinary strategies rooted in love. She is a restorative justice practitioner and has studied restorative justice in Rwanda, transformative leadership in Ghana, and has published various articles exploring racial justice and healing. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Melissa Bartholomew. Good morning, or good afternoon. I guess it's one o'clock, good day. It is a privilege and an honor to be here. As you heard from Katie, thank you for that welcome. My name is Melissa Bartholomew. I use the she series pronouns. I have the privilege of serving as the Associate Dean for Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging here at HCS. And on behalf of our Dean, David Hinton, our faculty, students, and staff, it is an honor to welcome you to the Divinity School campus. We are excited that you are here and that we have the opportunity to share this incredibly important day with all of you. Before we begin special commence this special commencement celebration, we want to take a moment to pause and breathe. At HDS, we are leaning into restorative justice principles and practices, which include grounding and breathing practices. We practice intentional breathing as a way to help center and ground ourselves before we begin programs and to prepare our hearts as we acknowledge those who have come before us, whose lives and sacrifices have made our very existence here on this land and at this institution possible. So as we pause and breathe, we are creating space to acknowledge that this present moment of celebration an accomplishment is inextricably linked to the past, a past that is in this country that is replete with violence and oppression. So I invite you all to breathe with intention as we honor through our collective breath the indigenous people of this land. The acknowledgement of our university's Native American program affirms that Harvard University is located on the traditional and ancestral land of the Massachusetts, the original inhabitants of what is now known as Boston and Cambridge. We pay respect to the people of the Massachusetts tribe, past and present, and honor the land itself, which remains sacred to the Massachusetts people. At HDS, we honor and acknowledge the sacrifices of those who came before us, through our collective work and collective intention and attention to the advancement of the liberation of, the, of indigenous people 
whose stolen land we are on, and to the formerly enslaved African and indigenous people and oppressed people who helped build this nation. But for the stolen land and the stolen people and labor, this country and this university would not be. We know too that Harvard's University, Harvard University's history not only includes the exploitation of black and brown and indigenous people, but also the exclusion of other people, including LGBTQ people. We see this in Harvard's 1920 secret court that targeted and expelled male students suspected of being gay. As we continue to breathe with intention, we are mindful of the hard fought victory of just being here. We are mindful of the gift of being here and celebrating commencement in person for the first time since the start of the COVID pandemic. And we honor our ancestors through all forms of kinship, including those beyond blood, whose own struggle, resistance, activism, and joy have led us to this very moment. We honor the millions of people around the world who have lost their lives to the COVID virus throughout the world and lost their lives as a result of the unrelenting racial and identity-based violence and devastating wars and violent conflicts. We honor our LGBTQ community, especially our transgender and non-binary youth whose rights to gender-affirming care and authenticity is shamefully under attack. There is a lot to breathe in. But as we celebrate today and this week, May our joy and our excitement in sharing this time and community together be our collective acts of resistance to violence and hate. May we affirm our connection to each other in this moment. We welcome you here to our part of Harvard where the celebration of our diversity runs deep and is rooted in love. We hope that you feel love's embrace and revel in it. May this celebration be the beginning of a week of moments that reaffirm your commitment to the work you came to the world to do as your authentic selves. Welcome and enjoy every moment of this day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bartholomew. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Greta, and I use the she, her, her pronouns. And I'm delighted next to bring to the podium the members of the HDS student organization, Queer Rights, as they lead us through an invocation of queer ancestors. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. My name is Nadia Milarisa. I use they, them pronouns. And I have the honor to open the way of this year's Lavender graduation with a collective prayer for our ancestors called the Moyuba from the spiritual religious tradition in which I'm a high initiated priest of called Regla de Ochaifa or Lukumi. Mojuba lofing, mojuba loru, mojuba ludu mare, mojuba bobo egu. Mojuba amarli leish. Mojuba deval princess. Mojuba cypress ramos. Mojuba Naomi Skinner. Mojuba Matthew Angelo Spam Pinato. Monjuba Paloma Vasquez, Tatiana Labelle, Ibae. Monjuba Catherine Katie Newhouse. Monjuba Kenyatta Kesha Webster. Monjuba Myla Love Parker. Monjuba Ariana Mitchell. Mojuba, 
fern feather. Mojuba Ray Muscat. Ibae bae tonu our trans and queer ancestors. King Kamache todos que se están presente en este servicio de hoy. Modupue. Thank you, everyone. I'm Heather Wakefield, She Series Pronouns, and I'm reading Who Said It Was Simple by Audre Lorde. There are so many roots to the tree of anger that sometimes the branches shatter before they bear. Sitting in Nedix, the women rally before they march, discussing the problematic girls they hire to make them free. And almost white an almost white counterman passes a waiting brother to serve them first. And the ladies neither notice nor reject the slighter pressures of their slavery. But I, who am bound by my mirror, as well as my bed, see causes in color as well as sex, and sit here wondering which me will survive all these liberations. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you our keynote Boston Poet Laureate, Portia Oliwola. She is a native of Chicago who writes, lives, and loves in Boston. Oliwola is a writer, performer, educator, and curator who uses Afrofuturism and surrealism to examine historical and current issues in black women and queer diaspora. She is an individual world poetry slam champion and the founder of the Roxbury Poetry Festival. Yeah, let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Olaiwola is Brown University's 2009 Highmark Artist in Resident, as well as a 2021 Artist in Resident at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. She is a 2020 Poet Laureate Fellow with the Academy of American Poets. Olaiwola earned her MFA in poetry from Emerson College and is the author of I Shimmer Sometimes Too. Olaiwola is the current Poet Laureate for the City of Boston. Her work can be found in or forthcoming from Triquarterly Magazine, Black Warrior Review, The Boston Globe, Essence Magazine, Redivider, The Academy of American Poets, Netflix, Wildness Press, and the Museum of Fine Arts and elsewhere. Let's give a great round of applause. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for saying it back. I know that was a choice. <laughs> I'm so honored, excited to be celebrating with you all. Congratulations. Um, I usually like to stick to the script, which is a poem. Um, so that's what I'll do. Otherwise, I'll just be tearing up uh, upon our first meeting. Um, I'm going to do three poems, and I try to curate this reading um, in terms of you know, this, <laughs> this huge advice I'm supposed to give to you all. I don't have any advice at all. <laughs> um, I'm like still trying to figure it out. Um, but these poems hopefully offer a glimpse um, into some ways in which I have been surviving as black, queer, et cetera, um, fat woman and so forth. Um, this first one is about joy, joy as resistance. It's called Chris Anthemum Says We End Homophobia. Chris Anthemum Says We End Homophobia. My girlfriend and I, lady lovers, high stakes highlining the jawbone and haircut are skin. A soft shield styled beyond this life, our laugh, I bet, when she and I are the only people, even though we are not, it's what we joke about. After we have tossed aside apprehension, wearing what made it past the shadows reflection, the clothes scattered, the floor cloaked 
heavy. I am as night as ugly, as wide as the frame of an opening. I cannot name the wounds we both wait, hers separate from mine. How she and I make it to the elevator is a puzzle. We appear no less than an hour after we are already supposed to be in a place we are not, but we show. Gloriously late, devastatingly gorgeous, glamorous to gawking teeth and gaping questions. They have not been through the wake we chuckle at. Olden fears keeping us from the joy two burrows away. The K-pop concert, the last brunch, we enter a restaurant knowing barely what the other has conquered, but we arrive together. Rakish beauty, lolling the waist, grinning wild affection at one another, protecting the hands in a clasp, our hearts the size of a fist, insisting anyone to speak. Go ahead, tell us how shiny the war, how glittery the blood, how finite and fine our fight. Yeah, you know, I was thinking on the way here, nobody does like glitter. Nobody uses glitter more fiercely than the queers. Um, you know, and I think we are like the spearheaders in fashion. Um, and then and, and just thinking about joy and practicing joy as resistance. Um, two is about, um, have folks seen, I assume everyone here has seen the new pride flag? Yes, right, it's, and if you haven't, welcome to the Lavender Graduation. Um, <laughs> no, it is the traditional rainbow flag, um, but recently they've added um, the uh, trans flag, right, which is white and blue um, and pink stripes, and then they added a black stripe as well as brown stripes, right, for like black and brown folks. And I just thought that was amazing that after all these years, the folks who started that movement had to be added into, re-added into the movement. And it, yeah, just kind of blew my mind a little bit. Um, and Netflix asked me to write a poem about uh, being uh, a black queer woman, um, and this poem is my response. It's called Netflix Calls to Ask What Pride Looks Like for a Black Queer Woman. Yeah, I mean, you gotta tell them the truth, right? Netflix Calls to Ask What Pride Looks Like for a Black Queer Woman and I join in on the joke. I tell them a flag walks into a parade and realizes it's forgotten some of its color. So the vanguard adds black and brown stripes, paints blue, pink, and white in its corners. The funny part, there is no punchline. Haven't you heard the story science tells us about the rainbow? If you mix all the colors refracting light, the result is a pure white, a pearly milk, an ivory tower glittering the procession. What color is the flag then? Which shade sits pretty up top the float? Black and brown people and trans women had to be edited into a movement they started. Afterthought to their labor, marginalized while marching. Isn't it gut busting how white supremacy works, how it absorbs all color? Isn't it ironic? When the colors bleed together, white shines through. How it never ceases to surrender. Netflix asks what pride means for a black dyke in today's world. And I wonder if they've seen the news feeds lined with black bodies. I wonder what they think to see the streets filled with protesters protesting the protesters. Pride is a parody refuses to join the fight against police brutality, even though the first parade was rebellion. Don't acknowledge a legacy, even though Stonewall was a femmed rimmed cocktail lunged at the cops. Netflix calls me with a knee slapper, a tearjerker, a death drop of a joke. I tell them to invite all the corporations, fasten the rainbow into dollar sign, build a buck off this blood, call up Adidas, 
your grandma, the liberals, the queers, new to the block and the cookout to bring in the news channels to gape at the black and queer surviving, to marvel the undead and me Netflix calls to ask about the future. In my mouth, wise cracks a riddle. Haven't you heard the parable science tells us about the color black, how it exists before the other colors show up? how it lingers long after they leave, how dangerous my dark, dark humor, still refracting light, the most mischievous joke around, been here before the shine, gonna be here after the sun fades the flag into memory, isn't it funny? Me alive, end and beginning. Wow, you guys are really incredible. Yeah, I'm just thinking about, you know, um, so excited for you all, right? Like graduating from Harvard um, and will naturally be the leaders um, as we move forward, right, in our country and all the work that you have in front of you, God bless you. <laughs> um, but also always remembering that the work is intersectional, right? Um, the work is the movement. Um, just keeping that in mind and light. Um, and um, someone already read a poem from Audre Lorde, um, who was definitely one of my queer ancestors. Um, I wanna end this, or start this last poem with an epigraph from a litany for survival, which um, Audre Lorde wrote. It's probably something I continuously return to, and it's also an offering of my last advice, which is to just never shut up, right? <laughs> to always be um, bothering folks um, in all the right ways, right? Um, Audre Lorde says, and when we speak, we are afraid. Our words will not be heard nor welcome, but when we are silent, we are still afraid. So it is better to speak, remembering we were never meant to survive. And this is an ode to my mouth. Mouth? a basket, mouth, give, 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 mouth, eager, mouth, silent, mouth, a river, a lake, say, give me what mine is, mouth, a house, house, got a family of eight who like to stay up late and talk, mouth, play, dominoes, mouth, curse, mouth, pray, mouth, come from my mama, mouth, my mama, mouth, big, mama, mouth, don't stop moving, mouth, Hungry, mouth got teeth, mouth eat, mouth black. It got a regurgitating history, mouth heard too much. Now it don't know how to shut itself. Mouth wide, mouth a train, mouth coming for who coming. Mouth say you can't have all this gutter, all this non-publishable. Mouth say so, 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 so. Mouth say salt. Mouth a rifle, mouth bang, bang, mouth cool. Mouth got cool words falling out itself and landing in between other people's cheeks. Mouth on fleek, mouth hip, mouth finesse, million dollar mouth. Mind join, stay outside my mouth. Mouth dig you a place to lay. Mouth bury you sweet sugar cane. Mouth hold you tight. Wrap you around its smut. Mouth squeeze, mouth choke. Mouth fat hole, swallow you. Still working on it, and then thank you all so much. Congratulations and sending all my love. Thank you so much, Portia. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of the members of the class of 2022, Harvard Law School student, Harry Chu. 
Harry P. Him is a graduating HLS student and the child of Hong Kong immigrants from Vancouver, Canada. He was an English teacher in Japan before law school and cares deeply about education, LGBTQ plus rights, peer mentorship, and strategic communications for progressive causes. Harry will begin a two-year fellowship in education policy at the Southern, Pol Southern Poverty Law Center and the Southern Education Foundation in Atlanta this September. Please join me in welcoming Harry. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Harry. I'm a law student from Vancouver, Canada, as you just heard. Um, I've been on Lambda, the Queer Student Society at Harvard Law School, for the past three years. And this year, I've been the Campus Advocacy Co-Chair and the Public Interest Careers Chair. Before I begin, I'd like to dedicate this to my incredible queer family at HLS, the people who have been with me through hell and high water. I love you. When I said yes to giving this speech, I thought, you know, it will be a nice chance to reflect on my time here. It will be a quick thing. I'll say a couple of lines about my journey, what the community means to me. And then they told me that I'd be the only student speaker in front of hundreds of people talking for 10 minutes. And I thought two things. What did I just agree to? And <laughs> What the hell am I going to talk about? <laughs> Have you ever had that experience where you sign up to something you think is going to be totally manageable, and it turns out to be way more than you thought it would be? Like, literally all the time, right? Like, any time you say yes to anything at this school, that happens. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thinking about what I'm going to say, and the usual suspects come to mind what I've done, what I'm proud of. At the law school, we tend to talk about what we're proud of in terms of our accomplishments. The titles and awards, the lines on our resumes, those things that people can see and point to and admire. But those don't reflect really what I'm proud of or what's been most meaningful to me. So instead, I decided to talk about two other things that I feel like have defined the proudest choices I've made, fear and failure. Not what you thought you'd hear about at graduation, right? But hear me out. Looking back, every meaningful thing I've done, and one of the things I think defines being queer is accepting, even taking pride in the certainty of fear and failure. Let me backtrack a little and explain. The work I've dedicated the most time to, and that's been most meaningful to me, is mentorship, public interest career, and first year mentorship. If you asked the 1Ls, that's what we call our first years, who know me, they might say a couple things. Harry organizes tons of socials and career events, is always offering advice, sometimes ad nauseum, about who to talk to and which orgs to join, he shows up to every Lambda event and knows a lot of people, but is somehow still kind of nervous and unsure of himself. And most misleadingly, he's that 3L with nothing left to worry about because he got that fancy education policy job at the Southern Poverty Law Center. But like I said, none of that really captures what I'm really proud of, why I care so much about mentorship and community, or what my journey here as the gay kid of Hong Kong immigrants has been like. Here are some things people don't know. When I came to HLS, I had almost no queer experience whatsoever. And I was terrified that I was too anxious, awkward, and late to the game to make it as a gay man. That I panicked after my first Lambda meeting because I was too scared to say a word to the cute guy sitting beside me. That I very nearly didn't finish law school because of my health. That when I'm planning events and thinking about what advice to give, there's always this voice in my head saying, just who the hell do you think you are? 
and that when I look out at queer events, I still see white spaces filled with predominantly white faces and wonder, do I belong? Will someone dismiss me, not talk to me, think I'm unattractive because of my race? The answer is yes, by the way. When people think about Harry, they don't know about the fear, the events that folks didn't come to, the dismissive comments about things I'd say, the many people and professors and employers who turned me down. And why should they? But sometimes I wish they did, because then I could tell them that pride doesn't live in the fancy titles or awards. It lives in the commitment we have to ourselves and those we care about, and the fact that we show up and fight for what we believe in, even though we don't know we'll succeed. All we know is that at some point we will slip up and fall and be rejected. And yet we show up anyways because they're worth it. Advocacy, connection, community, these things are worth risking fear and failure for. And by the way, isn't that true of the people we admire? We don't admire those on the front lines because they take on fights they know they'll win. We admire them because they know they can and will lose. Because no one can promise the trans kid in Florida or the migrant refugees in California that their dignity and human rights will be respected. And that defines everything meaningful we do. They're courageous choices we make based on our values, even though we're scared and know we can fail. So here's what I'm proud of. I'm proud that I've gone from being a scared little baby gay <laughs> to a leader in my community, that I've created spaces for us to gather and bond and support one another, that I've mentored and gotten to know incredible one else with amazing vision and dedication to social justice because I remember what it was like to be in their shoes and how much it meant to have a queer mentor lift me up and help me along. And finally, I'm incredibly proud that by being a prominent board member, I made our community just a little bit more welcoming for students of color. I did all of it while being scared, anxious, even terrified. And I'm still scared all the time. I still wonder whether I'm the best person for the job, whether what I say or do or who I am or look like will be enough, but that's okay. I'm proud of my journey, not because any number of things went my way, so many of them didn't, but because I picked myself up, dust myself off, went out there and did it anyway. That's the story of my journey with fear and failure but every one of you has one too. You have one because you are my queer siblings. And for us simply to exist is an act of endless courage. By being who we are and loving who we love, we embrace fear and risk every single day. Being queer connects us through bonds of bravery and belonging as more than just chosen family, and we deserve to be proud. We deserve to look back on those times in our lives when we were scared and ashamed, when we didn't know if things would be okay and take pride in what we've overcome to get here today. All of us understands what it means to dare greatly, to show up for what matters even when the outcome is far from certain because we've been doing it our entire lives. That's why I know that the world needs our voices our contributions, and our courage. I am so proud to call you my community and to graduate with all of you. Thank you.
We now invite to the podium James Gethin Evans and Melinda McPherson to introduce and present the Evelyn Hammonds Award for Exceptional Service to BGLTQ Inclusion. Hello, uh, my name is James Gethin Evans. I use he, him pronouns, uh, and I am a PhD candidate in the history department here at Harvard uh, and an administrator at FAS. And as a historian, I am thrilled to be here today to make history at Harvard's first ever in-person Lavender graduation. <laughs> Hello, my name is Melinda McPherson. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a 2022 graduate of the Speech and Hearing Bioscience and Technology program. We are both outgoing leaders of LGBTQ at GSAS, the Association for Queer Graduate Students at Harvard. Our diverse association provides community, solidarity, and advocacy on behalf of graduate students, and we are thrilled to see so many of our members celebrating here with us today. So last year when we did this on Zoom, I burst into tears and I'm going to hold it together so we're good. <laughs> uh, we are honored to be with you here today to present the Evelyn Hammonds Award for Exceptional Service to BGLTQ plus Inclusion at Harvard. The Evelyn Hammonds Award was established last year by those of us at LGBT at GSAS to recognize the contribution of administrators and staff at Harvard who strive to make our community more inclusive for all of us here today. During her tenure as Dean of Harvard College, the namesake of this award, Professor Evelyn Hammonds, who we're thrilled is with us here today uh, and will speak shortly, uh, she really embodied this spirit. She was instrumental in the creation of the Office of BGLTQ Student Life, an office which continues to serve Harvard's undergraduate community, providing critical resources and community. Her constant advocacy for inclusivity, diversity, and social justice and for the importance of bringing one's whole self to everything we do, are values that we hope will be emulated by our entire queer community. While acknowledging that we still have much work ahead of us to make Harvard a truly equitable campus, it is through the example of individuals like Professor Hammond that we can strive for the audacity to embrace difference and for courage in our conviction that we can leave Harvard a better place than when we each arrived. Before we present the award to a staff member who is here today, um, I would like to invite Professor Hammonds to the podium to say a few words. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this without crying. It's, you know, do you have an award after you? I mean, this. Okay. So I just want to make a, a few remarks. Uh, about why this ceremony is so important for the BGLTQIA community at Harvard today, May 24th, 2022. 37 years after I first walked onto this campus as a student when something like this ceremony was only a dream. For me, community has always been more than a word that names a relation. I always understood community to be a daily act of being in fellowship with others, in right relationship with others. And I believe that I am in community with the people around me and those connected to me near and far. And what community means to me is best understood in the South African philosophy of Ubuntu. Quote, it encompasses all our aspirations about how we live life well together. We feel it when we connect with other people and share a sense of humanity, when we listen deeply and experience an emotional bond, when we treat ourselves and other people with the dignity they deserve. As Archbishop Desmond Tutu explained, the essence of Ubuntu is, my humanity is caught up, is inextricably bound up in yours. And as his granddaughter noted, the bedrock of the philosophy is respect for yourself and for others. Ubuntu teaches us to look outside of ourselves to find answers. It tells us that individuals are nothing without other human beings. It encompasses everyone, regardless of race, creed, or color, or sexuality. It embraces our differences, and it celebrates them. 
This academic year has made, made visible many fault lines in our Harvard community. All of us have been stressed by our daily struggles with a virus that seems insatiable in the demands it has placed on us to protect ourselves and one another. Our community has been saddened by many losses, including the untimely deaths of our colleagues, Harvard Law School Professor Lonnie Guineer and Harvard Medical School Professor Paul Farmer. When I think about the fact that these two towering teachers and advocates for justice are no longer with us, my heart weeps. We have also been roiled by discussions about sexual harassment and the devastating impact it has had on those who are survivors of, of it in our community. These discussions have pushed me to think hard about the uneven distribution of power in our community and the impact of that inequality on those who are most vulnerable among us, students, faculty, and staff who are still deprived of rights, voice, and resources. They have pushed me to ponder my own responsibility, the great responsibility that those of us who are leaders and have power in this community must bear and do so ethically, from the heart, and with care. So what I want to ask of you as you leave this place, first, that you maintain the connections that you have made here and draw strength from them for the rest of your lives. Why? Because our community is stronger if we stay connected to those who came before us and those who will come after us. So I'm here with you this morning to rededicate myself to you all, asking all of us together to continue to work to build a better, stronger, more just and equitable community here at Harvard that can hold all of us scholars, students, and workers in an embrace that centers on Ubuntu. May we celebrate our differences in our common labors to make our Harvard the best it can be for us, for our future, and for the world. Congratulations to you all. Thank you so much for those words, Professor Hammonds. Through the Evelyn Hammonds Award, we, the students of LGBTQ at GSAS, recognize staff and administrators who go above and beyond the scope of their official roles in order to support LGBTQ plus inclusion at Harvard. Before I announce this year's honoree, I would like to acknowledge all the staff and administrators who made today's event possible particularly the Divinity School team, the Office of Gender Equity, the Student Services team at GSAS. They deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Today, they each embody the spirit of this award. It is in none of their job descriptions to organize and facilitate a graduation honoring LGBTQ students at Harvard. And yet here we are on this beautiful day to celebrate this vibrant community. If you've managed to keep this as secretive as we hoped, today's honoree will be surprised. <laughs> so therefore, it is a privilege to present this year's Evelyn Hammonds Award for Exceptional Service to BGLTQ Plus Inclusion to Janet Daniels. Janet serves as a senior program coordinator in the GSAS Student Center. Beyond her many official roles, uh, Janet has continuously found ways to support LGBTQ visibility and belonging on campus. As a student leader, I saw firsthand how her willingness to lend her time and resources helped ensure we could provide a diverse array of programming for all LGBTQ graduate students from screening ballets to queer trivia, and even a drag queen story hour with the Harvard Parent Association. <laughs> to me, one moment in particular stands out. Last year, for Pride Month, for the first time in Harvard's history, she organized the lighting of Lehman Hall in a spectacular rainbow. 
and she personally covered the steps to Lehman Hall with a beautiful chalk pride flag. This symbol sent a clear message to all LGBTQ plus students at Harvard. You belong, you matter, and people like Janet are here to help you flourish. Pride in who we are and the feeling of belonging in a community are not things we can take for granted. I'll actually briefly share something my father, who is here today, wrote to me after the tragic Pulse nightclub shooting in 2016. My advice is to create a quality circle of tolerance and kindness around us. And hopefully over time, that circle will begin to overlap with similar circles being created by others who refuse to let the bastards get us down. As LGBTQ plus rights continue to be threatened and members of our community vilified, today's ceremony is a powerful reminder that individuals like Janet Daniels, like Professor Hammonds, and others gathered here today in this space are dedicated to building these circles of kindness, amplifying those who are least heard, and creating a more loving and a more just Harvard. Please join me in welcoming Janet to the stage to accept this award. Professor Hammond, would you like to give this to you? Sorry, we have a nice award, goodness me. You can give it. Copyright 2022, the President and Fellows of Harvard College.